Well, firstly, let me say thank you so much for inviting me here to speak to you all today. It really is an honor to be talking uh, amongst such distinguished guests. Um, my name is Rory Holmes. I work for a company called ClearSpace. Um, for those of you who don't know about us, we are an in-orbit service company. We have core technology in robotics, in sensors, in rendezvous and proximity proximity operations, and, and we feel those are applicable to a wide range of different in-orbit service markets. I think we're most well-known, particularly in the press and with the public, for our debris removal missions. Um, but we see those really as one part of a, a wider in-orbit service thing, um, ecosystem that we're hoping to play in. So for my 10-minute talk today, I would just like to cover three points. Firstly, give an overview of what a debris removal mission looks like. So taking talk into action, as was discussed a number of times this morning. Um, secondly, I just want to touch upon why these missions are so hard. Uh, and thirdly, I had a question put to me by the organizers. What can governments do to help support commercial uh, entities like ClearSpace become successful. So I have a few thoughts at the end that I'm, I'm more than happy to share. So we're really lucky to work with a number of different space agencies on a number of different missions. Uh, we work with the European Space Agency, um, we work with the Luxembourg Space Agency, and we work with the UK Space Agency. My talk will focus more on the work we do with the UK Space Agency, just because that's, that's the one I'm closest to. So. Part one, what does a debris removal mission look like? I want to talk to you about the debris removal mission we do with the UK Space Agency. This is a, uh, an artic, artistic representation of it now. It's a mission that will remove two dead UK satellites from orbit um, and will launch in 2026. So, after launching our satellite, uh, we commission it, and then we start navigating towards the first target piece of debris that we're going to remove. These satellites are, are relatively large. They're about the size of a washing machine. Um, when we get close, uh, we then inspect, see what condition they're in, see how they're moving before commissioning our capture system. I think we're, we're reasonably well known for our novel capture system. We have a, a giant space claw um, that we will use to capture and securely hold um, these pieces of debris. It's a, a capture system uh, that allows us to completely engulf the target piece of debris before we make that first contact. As you know, if you touch something in space, it often moves in a, a difficult to predict manner. With such a capture system, we get completely around it before we make that first contact. So it has nowhere to go. We then pull these objects down, these pieces of debris down. Um, we drop them in the top of the atmosphere where they safely burn up. Uh, we make a, a sharp exit to make sure that we don't, we don't follow them down. And one of the key things about making these kind of services uh, commercially sustainable is that you need to do multiple debris removals with your satellite. The economics don't really work if you need one satellite to remove one piece of debris. You need to be removing multiple pieces of debris uh, with your one satellite. So with this mission, once we've removed two uh, defunct UK satellites from orbit, uh, we will then refuel ourselves. We have a close strategic partnership with OrbitFab. Um, we'll be using their services to refuel ourselves. That will then allow us to go on to do more removal missions uh, in the future. Um, of course, we want to act responsibly as well. Um, so when our satellite has reached its end of life, uh, we'll bring it down, we'll let it safely burn up in the, in the top of the atmosphere. Um, and before you know it, uh, it'll be coming home. So the second part of my talk, I'd like to focus on why these kind of missions are so challenging. So we are embarking a lot of new technology on these missions, whether it's robotics, or the sensor suites, or the rendezvous and proximity operations. Each of these by themselves is difficult. When you bring them all together, it's even more difficult. 
So our strategy as, at ClearSpace is not to do everything ourselves. We build upon the heritage, the experience that's in the wider ecosystem. There's no point us making an onboard computer or developing solar panels, for example. We, we bring all that in from the best partners throughout the world. We then build on that solid base with our core technology, whether it's the technology we have in robotics or sensors or rendezvous and proximity operations. So just touching a little bit on that, uh, I discussed about the claw capture system at the beginning. We're also developing robotics capabilities, this case a robotic arm, which will allow us to do much more dexterous operations on orbit. This becomes very useful when you start thinking about repair or assembly or other such in-orbit services. And again, this was a development that we're very grateful to the UK Space Agency for their support. We developed this arm in an agile manner, something that's not really done too widely with space hardware. I managed to get from concept to hardware in less than a year, and our team is iterating quickly, building, learning, rebuilding, evolving this as we go forward. So we're incredibly proud of, of how quickly we've been able to move here. Again, in core technology, this is an example of one of the tests we've been running with our sensors. This is a, a, a very detailed physical model of one of those target satellites here on the ground. Um, we are imaging it with our, our sensors. This is useful to, to validate that our, our sensors are working, but also to produce a data set that can feed our image processing algorithms and the algorithms governing, governing the uh, rendezvous and proximity operations on board. And finally, another core technology, as I said, working closely with OrbitFab and their refueling solution to make sure that these missions can do multiple, multiple removals um, uh, before they reach their end of life. Each of these individual technologies is complex. It's hard to do on its own. Bringing it all together in one package is, is even harder, but we're excited for that challenge. So finally, um, I had the question put to me, what can governments, what can agencies do to, to help companies like ClearSpace achieve a commercially viable uh, solution? Um, I have three ideas, which I'm very happy to share. So firstly, I think it's, uh, it's important that agencies uh, allow us to move fast in our development, uh, support us to, to move quickly, develop things quickly. We see competition is, is all around us, and we need to stay ahead of the game. Um, Secondly, I think it's important uh, to enable us to develop solutions which are close to the ultimate commercial offering that we hope to provide. There's always complications with governmental money, but, but limiting the extra requirements needed um, that are imposed on us uh, really helps as well. And then the third thing, having a stable and forward-looking regulatory environment with a, a, a government, and a licensing body willing to talk about how these new, novel, complex missions um, can be brought to life it is also really important. And I just want to recognize the fantastic support we've had from the UK Space Agency, particularly on those three points, which they've been uh, hugely, hugely supportive of the work that we've done on this mission. So maybe I finish with that by saying thank you to them and, and thank you to all of you. <laughs>